Okay, there's a couple things I want to say before we get started. One is you need to work at your own risk. Two, whenever you deal with hydraulics, large forces, tons of force, it can be potentially fatal. So take all the necessary safety precautions. Uh, this is my kitchen countertop. It just poured down rain out there. and It's pretty nasty. I didn't want to go out there on my workbench. But this is some hose I got from Discount Hydraulic Hose. It uh, seems to be very good quality. It is uh, very affordable. This is what uh, one of the hoses that my tractor takes, 3 8 at that pressure rating. This is some half inch that I got. I uh, have 3 8 inch fittings. I need to get an organizer like one of those boxes you get at uh, the big box stores. This is half inch and this is 3 quarter. I don't have the dies for this yet. I'm going to work on the 3 8 let, uh, let me show you where you can get a lot of good information. Okay, this is Discount Hydraulic Hose. They are a wealth of information and they have really good prices on their products. And no, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I'm not making anything off of this. They just have some good stuff. What I like about this is you can go like right here to fittings. Let's say we want crimp fittings. Okay, you have to figure out what, what type of fitting your particular equipment has. You can click on that. But this over here, the literature, it gives all the specifications. Like if we were to go right here. And you have uh, all of this information right here, which you can print it out. Now, my hydraulic application takes this type of hose, and we already crimped the 3 8 and you can see the, how it specs out right there. So, this, this, uh, like I said, guys, is a uh, wealth of information. So, I'll try to leave a link. Hey, this is episode two of Putting It to the Man, Making Your Own Hydraulic Hose Crimper. And I'm the Homestead Prepper. Basically, I scoured the internet for information on how to make a hose crimper. I didn't find too much out there. There was a blog that I run across, and the guy had some pictures. He had made one, but that's all he had was some pictures and a little bit of information. But nothing uh, about how to go about it or anything like that. I'll, I'll try to leave a link to uh, his blog. Um, I looked at, you know, there's service manuals online for various hose crimpers, whether you want Eaton, Gates, Aeroquip, Dayton, whatever. I looked at all of those. I looked to see how hoses were crimped. I figured my best line of approach was to uh, buy a die. So I bought a, th a die for 3 8 hose. Uh, they're on eBay. You can buy all kinds of different brands and things for, I saw some for $77, $80, $90. Bucks. Of course, you can buy new ones, but you're going to pay a lot more money for them. But the hose crimper was basically built around the die. And then I needed something for motivation, which a bottle jack seemed like the logical alternative instead of getting into some fancy hydraulic pumps. But basically, we'll uh, do a start with the motivator, which is the bottle jack, of course. Uh, let me uh, let me remove that. Just put that down right there. Okay, I cut this out with a plasma cutter. I think I got some video of that, and I wanted the bottle jack to sit down in the thing. This this is half inch steel plate I got up at as a matter of fact I got all this up at Tampa Bay Steel basically half inch one foot by one foot. This is a piece of six inch by I think it's twenty seven inch half inch steel and this was left over from this when I made the shop press so that didn't cost me anything. I think this was sixteen dollars for that piece of steel. The uh, this is uh, I guess called the pusher. I cut that out with the plasma cutter. This is a three inch electrical rigid coupling. It's galvanized too. I cut that out so I can look down in there and see it. Of course you can't really see that well but uh, this cost I think seven dollars up at Raybro CED. 
uh, $9, $10, something like that. I called uh, a plumbing place here locally and they wanted $20 for this. So I went with the electrical. It seems pretty strong. This right here is the most important part and I'm going to put this on my work table and take this apart and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I, I failed to mention that this right here is removable. It's just got a couple pieces of angle iron on there. I didn't want it to slip off or anything. This just picks up. It's uh, very heavy. I also forgot to mention I've got this plate right here is bolted on here. And the reason I did that is because I don't have a welder that will weld half inch steel right now. So I uh, decided to bolt it. So let me uh, take that off and put that on the table and show it to you. All right, I'm going to show you guys how this works. Okay, that's our uh, fitting. In the last video, you saw I really screwed it up. I was playing around and I must have moved the thing up. But you can see those little marks there. It goes right there. I should have put it in like that and tightened it down. And that way, that way it would hold it. But basically, you put a force on this and this squeezes those things together and it crimps it. So let's, let's look and see how that works. Let's take that out of there. But you see how the, the teeth open up? You push down, it, it tightens it. So that's basically how it works. This is, uh, I think this is called the die ring. I don't know. I can't think of what it's called. The, these are, this is the die. Like I said, this is a three side. Now this is a two piece die. Let's see if we can get that out of there. It's real greasy. Okay. Come on, a lot easier than it went in. And that fits on there like that. You have to have a hole right here. That's an inch and three quarter. Uh, this moves on the bottom. You, you can't just have the whole thing floating out there in space because it, it needs to slide on something. And that, that should be greased too. This was the hardest part of the thing to construct. Like I said, I built this around the die. What I did was I put the die on there. I took my Sharpie and I just drew around it. Now it's not perfectly round, it's got some flat spots on it. Right here, right here. I drew around it, I cut it out with a plasma cutter, and then I used, yes, hand files because I couldn't justify buying a milling machine to make this. And it wasn't that bad. I went a little too far here and there, so I got the welder, I filled it in, and I filed it back out. But it fits in there pretty good. And what this is, is a piece of 3 sixteenths and a piece of quarter inch. I, I couldn't find any 7 sixteenths at the time. This is a piece of three quarter. I think that was around 28 bucks just for that. And this is some angle iron as I showed you I happen to have lying around. That's three sixteenths. I scored that with a inch and three quarter hole saw and I scored it on this side too and then I cut it out with the plasma cutter. So that's how it works guys. Now I didn't weld this together because like I said I don't have a welder that's that heavy duty and I just bolted it together and that lines it up. I've oriented it north which I don't know if you can see that. East, west, south. I know it sounds dumb but that's how I was able to keep everything straight. Uh, it's not really that complicated guys. The hardest thing like I said was using a little elbow grease and filing that thing out but even that wasn't that bad. But uh, I hope this has helped somebody. If y'all have any questions uh, just feel free. Homestead Prepper out. Okay I'm going to do a little plasma cutting. This is what I'm going to be using right here. You can see up there in the upper left hand corner this is a number 10. It's a little difficult to see, but I want uh, eye protection. Some people use sunglasses. I don't recommend you do that. I've drawn out a pattern right here in marker, and I'm going to use this because uh, I'm not too steady, too precise. It's difficult to see and to get it straight, but this is going to give me a perfect pattern right here, and I'll just move that around, and I'll be able to cut that thing out. So let's see if we can do some cutting. So let's put these on off.
Alright, as you can see, it's cut a pretty good pattern right here. I'm going to have to move it. But that's how I'm cutting it out. I'm going to keep shabby, actually. So I don't want the jack to get too hot either. Smoking. I burned some of that wood under there. Whoops. 